Hello, today is 10-3-2021, October 3rd. And uh, today I uh, did as I've done before, where I'm praying, seeking the Lord, seeking that His will would be done over my own will. And uh, I kind of understood this strange concept, but it was given to me in the flesh but it, um, I believe that it has a, a, a spiritual purpose. So there was this package that was trying to be delivered. Uh, the delivery man came to my door yesterday and he knocked. And I opened the door and it was a vacuum. Uh, and he was trying to deliver it because it had the correct address and um, number for the, the the residents on the package but the name was not correct it was a different name than anyone who lived there and so I told him it wasn't for us we had not ordered it and he took it away and then uh, today the next day as I was leaving this package was sitting on the front step this time I didn't hear a knock I didn't hear any attempt for delivery. I just saw the package sitting on the front step. And it was the same package for the same person. And it was a vacuum cleaner. And so as I left, uh, I left it on the front step. It wasn't mine. And I was thinking to tell uh, the front office, you know, that it had been uh, an attempted delivery. But it was for the, the wrong um the wrong place the wrong person there's no resident by that name so um, but as I was leaving it just so happened that uh, I heard two of my neighbors come out of their doors uh, at the same time as I was coming down the stairs and so one was the neighbor that lived up the stairs and to the uh, just next next door this, the door right next to mine the other one was downstairs and I asked them both if they knew of anyone who had ordered a vacuum cleaner and they said no but uh, the lady that I talked to uh, she mentioned how once they had tried to deliver some uh, fancy coffee pots to her a different place that she was before and um, you know she just basically told the office and uh, they figured it out you know so uh, but she said something curious which was kind of maybe more of a, a worldly way of thinking than I but she said maybe it was a, a gift you know this package it was a gift from the vacuum gods which sounds kind of strange but um, anyway I called the office and they said the office is closed today they had an answering service and the answering service the lady she said uh, that she recommended to just keep it until tomorrow okay and then the office would be open and they could deal with it so to keep the package until the next day so uh, I guess I'm trying to say is these are things that are happening in the kind of in the uh, in the flesh in the things that we could see and maybe kind of understand so here I am today uh, at the cemetery and you know it's like uh, it's a strange thing but I kind of have this these understandings that God can use a person God can use a man um, almost like a man named Legion where he would uh, be like a vacuum cleaner okay he could draw all these things towards him he could be many legions of devils and demons uh, all within this one but he would come uh, to this place by you know by God's God's plan where Jesus would be coming past him and, and Jesus would cast out all those things every last one of them into the pigs into the swine and the swine would rush 
and run and go into the waters choke and die and so I kind of have this understanding of this vacuum cleaner from more of a spiritual standpoint a spiritual sense you know it's like it's like you kind of have to have maybe walked in the spiritual a little bit to understand what it is what it is like but like where you could have like an overwhelming mountain of these these things these uh deceivers uh devils demons to come upon you and be so heavy uh, upon you that your only hope is in Christ Jesus so after this man legion was allowed to be set free of all this all of these things that were happening unto him he desired to follow the Lord but the Lord said to go unto those who you kind of knew him before and tell him the good thing that he had that Jesus had done for him and so you know it's like it's like a uh, an interesting thing where I, you know the vacuum was attempted to be delivered I said it wasn't for it wasn't for me but then the next day it was left there and I couldn't get rid of it because the office was closed and was asked to hang on to it until the next day and then they would deal with it And so I kind of had this strange thought of, like, uh, Judas and Jesus. And how in order to follow Jesus, I also needed to be betrayed. Just as Judas betrayed Jesus I needed to be betrayed in order to follow him we know that Judas had a devil but we also know that Judas was fulfilling scripture which is a hard thing to understand, but even Jesus himself, he says, none is lost but the son of perdition, that scripture should be fulfilled. So it's a humbling thing to lower yourself, to come down to this one who betrayed your Lord and to find him willing to allow him to betray you also so that you could follow the Lord Jesus and be obedient unto death it's a strange thing but there's there's something that I'm struggling to wrap my mind around but it's like this vacuum cleaner Let's say there's a pride. Say there's a power and a pride. Say you receive some sort of power. Some sort of a, a power seat is given unto you and you're able to do certain things and impress those who would be upon the earth. And, and because of that, you had some sort of pride. But this Judas... He recognized he had the innocent blood upon his hands. And he tried to give back the money. And they they wouldn't take it back. So he cast it down. And then they bought this field. It was uh, to be a, a field of blood for the stranger. And so who is the stranger? Who is this one? Who is this stranger? Jesus says, I was a stranger and you took me in. So 
So perhaps it is uh, recognizing one that is as a stranger, as a thief. One who would be not expected to be carrying the Lord Jesus Christ within them. And you receive them and love them. You know, even though they may be lost, <laughs> as I'm sitting here, this little, little uh, roly-poly uh, caterpillar just crawled up to visit. <laughs> but there may be one that appear as one that was lost, one that maybe struggled in this world, one that maybe was like a, a man legion, you know, a stranger, one that hung out in these places of darkness, hung out in the graves and the cemeteries and um, was dealing with spiritual, dealing with things of the spirit and they weighed heavily upon that person. You know, they were like a, like a thief, confusing, difficult to understand and you, some would say they have no hope but their hope is in the Lord Jesus Christ. It is the same for you and me, it is the same for them. So uh, it's almost like this strange vacuum cleaner, you know, like where if you would receive one who uh, perhaps was like this and to love them, even as your, you know, love your neighbor as yourself, to love them as if that could have been me, you know, that could have been something that I had to deal with and just recognize that they are, are loved by God, that God would even set them free and God may send them again to say the good things that he has done for them, you know, and perhaps if you would receive that, that word, you know, perhaps you would be um, one who would turn back, repent and give God glory. And so the verse that God gave me, <laughs> here's the caterpillar he made his way onto my my sleeve in Daniel 12 the verse God gave me today was the sealing of the book it says but thou O Daniel shut up the words and seal the book even to the time of the end many shall run to and fro and knowledge shall be increased So Daniel's told to close this book, to seal this, this book. A little bit farther on it says, Many shall be purified and made white and tried, but the wicked shall do wickedly, and none of the wicked shall understand, but the wise shall understand. So Daniel had all this understanding, and it troubled him. He didn't know what to do with it. He's told to seal it up. And it says, But go thou thy way till the end be, for thou shalt rest, and stand in thy lot at the end of the days. And so, God, one day I asked God, I said, Who is this who is helping me? And he said, Daniel. And you know, I call upon the name of Jesus Christ. I always call upon the name of Jesus Christ and I believe that he would allow you know only those that he would want me to hear from to speak he would allow only those that would you know maybe be looking out for my best interest to teach me to help me because he is the master Jesus Christ is my master and this word was given unto uh, to Daniel that he would go his way and stand in his lot at the end of the days <laughs> there's that guy I can hear it on my jacket <laughs> I don't know where he's going but God knows the plan Jesus is the first and the last Jesus is the resurrection 
Jesus is the life. Jesus is the way. He is the truth. No man comes to the Father but by and through Jesus. And so if Jesus is the first and the last, even the last resurrection, he may raise Daniel on that last day. Daniel was a man who was never a king on earth, but always like a helper to the king. But he always looked unto God as if God was his king. There was no one else higher to Daniel than God. And even the lions of the lion den, lion's den, uh, their mouths were closed. So God put a protection upon Daniel and gave a promise to Daniel. And so God was telling me that he wanted me to teach a people that would be prepared to go up against the double-edged sword. To prepare a people, to teach a people to be prepared to stand before God. To teach children of the kingdom of God who may have been cast out to know what is required of them to stand before God on that day of judgment that they would know to forgive to forgive every man their brother that they could also be forgiven by the Father to recognize that the Word of God is true that the Word of God will come to pass you could look for today and just try to save your life today or you could lose your life for his name's sake that you should find it to look the long goal there's like a short goal and a long goal you know and you got to remember the children the children of the kingdom Jesus says let the children come to me who are we to restrain them or keep them from coming to the Lord Jesus Christ so perhaps I just need to be faithful unto God and what he's told me and teach the children preparing them for that day that they would come forth just as Daniel would come forth on that last day and be prepared stand ready for the judgment the great white throne judgment it is better for us if we could find that which sins against us and pluck it out or cut it off to enter into the kingdom of heaven maimed than to be cast into hell and everlasting torment and so that's what I understand and God knows whether how I'm supposed to teach but I'm supposed to close and seal it there's more there's more that I know God will have me speak by the Spirit those things which I am required to speak if kings would call me up before them I'll have to say by the Spirit those things which I am required to say but it may be for a testimony against them seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all those things that you have need of will be added unto you if you find yourself in a place of drought confusion and you can't find or know which way to go or who to turn to or what you know which way which way you're asking God help me help me I'm lost I need help God has shown me things of the spiritual things of the kingdom he has trained me in these things so that I could be as a householder Right now it may seem as though there are very few within my house. But Jesus, he has gone to the Father and he has prepared a place for us. Many mansions. He has prepared them and he desires that where he is we may be also. He desires that we would repent and turn back to God. He desires that God's will would be done. 
on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdom will come here on earth and Jesus Christ shall reign a thousand years. When I say Jesus Christ shall reign, Jesus Christ is the word of God. So the word of God will endure. The word of God will rule and reign over those who be householders. Those who would surrender to the word that Jesus spoke and do it. Their houses will stand. They will be as those houses that are founded upon the rock. But if you hear those words of Jesus, you do not do them. Your house will fall. And it will be like a house built upon sand. And great shall be the fall of it. But if you find yourself having lost everything, repent and turn back to God and seek to rebuild your house upon the rock. God will make a way where there seems to be no way. If you are a rich man here on earth and you're reading the scripture and wondering how is it that you should ever be able to enter into heaven. With God, all things are possible. Trust Him. Trust God. All right. God bless you in Jesus' name.